<clears throat> All right, y'all, what's going on? What's going on? We are back. Tonight we will be interviewing head band director Tori Williams from Baker Middle School, Baker, Louisiana. So let's get it started, y'all. Let's get it started. <clears throat> Bear with me for a couple of minutes, y'all. Bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. We also have the Trent White. He'll be coming back talking tonight. My co-host Ricky Watkins will be here also. So let's get it going, y'all. Waiting for them to accept the invite. Man, how y'all doing tonight? Everybody staying safe? So wait on them to accept, y'all. <clears throat> Hopefully we have a band season this fall, y'all. Even if it's a condensed one. Waiting for our guests to join. Waiting for our guests to come in. All right. Got the man of the hour is getting ready to come on. <clears throat> Turn the volume down. Might be having some connection issues with the person that's joining. He might be having some problems joining. Stay with us, y'all. We're having a few little issues, y'all. Stay with us. Okay, let's try to get him in this time. <clears throat> Here we go. Tori, what's going on, man? Unmute your mic, Tori. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How's it going, man? Oh, good. It's good, man. Staying safe from this pandemic. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Well, y'all, let's get it going. This is our guest for the night, Mr. Tori Williams, Baker Middle School Head Band Director. So, man, give a little background information for yourself for the people who may not know you. Well, hello, I'm Tori Williams. Um, I'm a 2004 graduate of Baker High School and a 2009 graduate of Southern University Music Education, of course, four-year member of the Southern University Human Jukebox and also a member of the Symphonic Band. 
I've been teaching at Baker Middle School for 11 years. So I'm going on my 12th year this year. Okay, okay. So when did you fall in love with music? Let's say I, um, I started really taking an interest in music in middle school, starting off in a uh, seventh grade when my the band director at the time, Ms. Murray, invited me and uh, recruited us into the band. You know, I followed my friends into it and started on trumpet, learning all the notes and all that. And um, when the high school band came down and recruited us, they did like a special performance and got us all excited to join the high school band. Once I got in uh, the Baker High School band and did band camp and so I could play the music in March, that's when things really took off. And what really changed things for me was my senior year, I had the chance to conduct a piece with the concert band. And it made me realize like, hey, I can do this for a living. I really like this. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. So who would you say are your biggest influencers in the band role, you know, whether it's band directors, uh, arrangers, you know, people like that? Well, of course, I have to start off with uh, my high school director, uh, Mr. Trent Johnson, former Baker High and Port Arthur band director. He started it with me. Then I also have to say with Southern, of course, Dr. Isaac Riggs, Mr. Carnell Knighton, uh, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Hamer, all those influence uh, a lot of things that I do today with the band, arranging wise and with how I'm teaching. Okay, okay. So what would you say were some of the challenges you had to face when you took over Baker Middle School? Well, the, the number one thing was when I first came into Baker Middle, it was kind of unstable. They had a lot of turnover with the band directors. They'll stay like a year and then we'll leave. So that, of course, affected the numbers. So trying to get the numbers back with the band, that was one thing. Another, of course, you're always dealing with instruments and resources and funding, so you have to find ways to deal with that. And then just getting the kids to really take an interest into the band. So you have to find ways to um, combat those issues that I encountered. Okay, okay. So what made you want to be a band director? Like what, what you know, popped up in your head and say, you know what, this is what I want to do as a career? I'll say uh, when I was finally given a chance to be a leader in the high school band, uh, being section leader of the baritone section, and then also being a drill master where we help uh, with the drills, teaching students uh, marching fundamentals and assistant di the director during after school practices, teaching the drills. I got to see like, okay, I can, I see I'm um, doing pretty well with teaching and all that. And then getting uh, to direct the song with the concert band. And I saw how fun it was to be on the podium. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give this uh, a chance. And of course going to Southern, you know, you really start learning about how much you really love music doing that. Um, seeing all the people that come together from all over the country and come to um, a band program like that and put in so much hard work to keep the legacy going. I was like, I, you know, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Okay, okay. So what's some of the best advice that you have gotten since becoming a band director? Say some of the best advice, I'll say one is a... Uh, forming a relationship with the staff that you're working with, mm -hmm. with your custodians, with the secretary, mm -hmm. with your guidance counselor, and getting your administrators also. You have those people on your side, you're gonna need that to be successful for long-term in your career, no matter what school you're at. Mm -hmm. um, another bit of advice is uh, trying to get the children to buy in. You have to show them that you really care for them. Mm -hmm. And when they see that you care for them and you're doing what's best for them, then you'll find it is much easier to get them to buy into your program. And also, don't be afraid to reach out uh, for help. You know, like they say, with raising children, it takes a village. Same thing with uh, building a good band program, it takes a village. So reach out for help when you need it. Okay, okay. So even though it's just the uh, middle school level, what are you looking for? Or, you know, what's your goals, you know, as far as trying to get these kids ready for high school band, college band, you know, just learning the basic fundamentals? What are you looking for? Uh, in terms of looking for, I need, I'm looking for students that are open-minded and uh, are ready to accept the challenge because band isn't easy. You know, you have to be, have self-discipline and you have, certain, have to uh, be willing to work hard to learn the fundamentals on your instrument. Uh, so I'm looking for kids that are willing to put in that work, that are dedicated. Where I'm at, you know, we have to have after-school practices to make things work and to be prepared for performances. So I'm just looking for those type of kids that are really ready to work. 
Okay, okay. So what would you say has been your best moment so far as a band director? I'd say the best moment is seeing my students walk across the high school stage and going to um, follow how, how I did, going on to play in the college groups at Alcorn, at Southern, and seeing that, I was like, wow. You know, it started here at Baker Middle, and now I'm seeing them go through Baker High, and now they're at Southern, and I get to watch them on the videos and see them enjoying themselves as well. That's a very great accomplishment to look at. Okay, so out of the songs that you have written for the band, what would you say is your personal favorite? See, in terms of for middle school, I'd say probably my favorite was uh, probably the song Flawless that my band did by Beyonce a few years ago. They really did a great job with it, and they seemed to enjoy it when we played it at the concert. And I'll probably say also enjoy it when I did Rolling in the Deep. Like, they got a standing ovation, and I think that was probably the turning point of when the kids really started buying into the program. The whole crowd loved them when we played it at the winter concert. Mm -hmm. And as far as high school, i say my favorite arrangement might have been the one that the high school played this year by Beyonce before I let go. Okay. So i say those have been my favorite arrangements. Okay. So what advice would you give an up and coming band director that's, you know, just getting started? What's, what's some good advice you can give to them? Well, I let them know, you know, a good portion of your job is outside of arranging songs and teaching music. You got to have to wear many, many hats. You're going to be a counselor. You know, you got to uh, give uh, a lot of guidance to the students, you know, and um, it goes beyond teaching and arranging music. You got to be able to manage business, make uh, set up performances with people and everything, organize traveling. It's a lot of things that go into being a band director that's outside of just teaching music. So just be prepared for that. Okay. Okay. So is there any advice you would like to give to your band students, you know, with all of this COVID-19 going on, this you know, social issues going on? Is there any words of encouragement or advice you would like to give to your students? I like them to, you know, just talk about it. Talk these, talk things out. Don't be afraid to share your opinion and all that. Talk things out. Find people that you can talk to. It's okay to discuss this. You know, don't sweep things under the rug and hide your feelings because that's how we've gotten into situations like this. So find somebody and find your um, avenues to talk things out. And also, you know, be safe. Um, social distance, wear your masks. You know, a lot of things are turning political and when we start doing those things like that, that's where we get into trouble as a country. You know, just think about others and take care of yourselves and be prepared for the school year because we're going to find a way to have band going on in Baker. Yes, yes. Some kind of way there will be band, y'all. Some kind of way. So, man, um, as far as the band culture and, you know, in Baton Rouge and in Baker, how would you say the band culture is right now? Is it, is it better than it was? when you were in school or hasn't gotten worse? Is it still the same? What's your thoughts about that? I'll say uh, it's a little bit different. I won't say it's worse, I'll say it's different. When Back when I was in school, all this technology and all this stuff, that was just becoming the wave then. I mean, right. very few people even had cell phones. Mm -hmm. I mean, social media didn't exist. We didn't have YouTube. So we didn't have all these distractions that the children have today. Right. So I think, uh, Today, we have to be a little bit more flexible with trying to get children to take an interest in what we're doing because there are more things out there that can draw their attention away. So I'll say it's changed in that manner. Okay, okay. We have my co-host, Ricky Watkins, joining. Uh, okay, Tori, we have a question for you from uh, Smash Time Productions. He says, can you see yourself being a high school band director in the future? Uh, I thought about that. Um, as of now, I'm comfortable at the middle school level because I like the flexibility of it all. You know, you don't, it's not as time consuming, your afternoons and all that with your weekends. I like to uh, travel with Southerns um, and watch Southern football games and all that and follow them around. You know, with high school band, you're kind of limited with that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like the flexibility. But if I would leave, it would have to be the right situation. Okay, okay. We have another question from uh, Mr. Trent Johnson. He said, what is your favorite concert band song? My favorite concert band song would have to be the song we played my senior year in the concert band at Baker High. It'd be a folk dance. Okay. Very challenging piece. I love it. I love playing uh, highly technical pieces when I was coming up on my instrument. So I'll say folk dances. Okay. Okay. So what would you say are some things that 
are some ways that people can help your band program, whether it's fundraising or giving back, or you just, you know, mentoring the kids. What's some ways that, you know, they can help out your band, your band program? I say um, just showing the kids that you're supporting them, you know, show up to their events. That, that in itself, when they see that their parents and their community are out there showing up and supporting them, that goes a long way to them um, really loving to be in a part of the organization. So that, of course, fundraising and participating in the fundraisers, because, you know, at schools or in urban areas, you tend to lack funding and lack the resources needed that other schools may have. So definitely helping out with fundraising will also help as well. <clears throat> okay. Ricky, man, did you have any questions for Tori? Oh, no, man. I'm just, I'm just getting back from getting seafood. I'm sitting here. I just chimed in. Hey, how you doing, Tor? Hey, good. How you doing? Man, glad to see you doing good. Hope your family doing well, your kids, your program doing well due to the COVID-19 situation. Yeah. Um, my, my thing is, how have it, you been able to have a, a steady flow of strategic band members coming through that program year in, year out? What are you doing? What's the secret? Well, I think a lot, a lot of times, you know, it's the culture. You know, Baker High was, if you look at Baker High's band program, even back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, it's always been a culture of success. Um, if you ask people who's the first band from Louisiana that performed in the Rose Bowl, a lot of people probably guess Southern or Grambling, LSU, exactly Baker High School. Oh, wow. So even back in the 50s and 60s, Baker High has always had a culture of excellence and that's continued on. And I think you know, just like with Alabama's football program or even LSU football program, people are attracted to winners. So I think that winning culture is what keeps uh, the kids interested. Yeah. And I remember, I remember when Trent first did his student teaching. I think that had to be 97 or 98 school year under the, um, the Caucasian band director. Y'all had a big band up there. Oh, yeah. They did. That was a big band Baker had under that, under, yeah. you know. Um, mm -hmm. What are the things that influence you the most to stay at the middle school level and not go to the next level? Because next level is right next door. Right. Well, you know, somebody has to do the middle school job. And I, you know, I feel like, you know, I found my uh, area that I like really doing is middle school. So um, somebody has to do it. You know, a lot of and, times you see people come out of college, they try and rush off to the high school jobs and forget about the feeder program. So mm -hmm. as of now, I'm happy being with the feeder program. And and you know what, Tori? I'm glad you made that statement because I was talking with somebody else the other night and, and I said the same <laughs> thing. Just because you graduate college don't mean you're a, a high school band director yet. You, you coming out of school, you need to go to the middle school level and build your and fix the flaws that you may find dealing with children, because it's di it's different from six to eight and nine through twelve. Six to eight gonna give you a little lip. You write them up, they are gonna be quiet. Nine through twelve, they are gonna be ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? So some people got to understand where they're placed in the circle of the circle of the, um a life, which I call the circle of the fifth, <laughs> <laughs> because what happens is. They're trying to get to the next level to supersede their friend and show them that I'm better than you and which if they was to go to the middle school and help their friend and join their friend on that, on that high school level as an assistant director, that program will succeed instead of trying to be different and be subjected to I'm the head band director. I do what I want to do, Ro. You're failing in yourself. You're hurting the program. You're hurting the school name. You're tarnishing your career. And most of all, you're hurting the future education of the world. I mean, mus musicians of the world. I'm glad that you found yourself complacent at the middle school and been doing what you're doing. It's been about, what, 10 years? 11. <laughs> I, I was close. Because yeah. you, you, you remember when I was helping Tamika at Washington Marion, right. I asked you, when you was gonna go to the um, high school level, you told me soon. She said, soon, <laughs> I, been, I, I left Washington Maryland in 15. Man, that's been a while, man. But you know, I, I, and the thing is, you know, a lot of people gonna compare other big cities like New Orleans, Memphis, all these other cities to like Baton Rouge middle schools. 
the middle schools in Baton Rouge never had that structure. Mm -hmm. You have the most structure as a disciplined band, pro middle school band program. So right, when people right. say middle school band program, they have to um, they have to comprehend that none of the successful high school directors actually went to a middle school. They actually just, a lot of people don't realize, a lot of band directors roll into a band program that's already got the wheels turning. All they got to do is just add a little bit to it and keep going. Right. Keep it because, going. you know, you, you see a lot of band directors, Tori, that w don't want to go to middle school, go to a high school. And when the wheels stop turning, they jump ship because they can't get them turning because they don't know what they do. They do and they only They only know this person had a freshman class in 2019. I could take the job because the seniors and everybody going to be gone. This freshman class is going to hold it down for three years and I'm going to look good, but they can't go nowhere and start it from the bottom. You know what I'm saying? So I, I applaud your efforts with the, with those kids in middle school. You remember, you remember Tori, I had a, I had a stepdaughter in your band class. Oh yeah. On clarinet. And yeah. I asked Tori D, everybody, Tori could vouch for this. She was coming home, not having an instrument. Mm -hmm. Tori asked me, I called Tori, he told me what she needed, what I did, Tori. I, yep. I brought it right up to the school. No yep. questions asked. There you go. You ain't got no reason. And that asked what I told Tori, what I told him in front of her. If she don't do her work, don't learn that horn, you fail her ass. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got a, okay, we got another question from Smash Time. He said, what's your favorite middle school band besides yours? Well, of course, I always try and look at what other programs doing. Um, I kind of have to divide it up with marching in concert. I kind of always try and um, model off uh, what Mr. Pizzo is doing at uh, Sherwood Academic Magnet Middle. I mean, just every year, sweepstakes at festival. So I've always oh, been yeah. trying to, try to get to always. that. Always. Since the yeah. 90s. Yes. Sherwood Middle always had an outstanding uh, concert band. Mm -hmm. Always. And as far as uh, with marching band, of course, I'm uh, pretty in tune. I'm like well, what I see out of Alice Hart out of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Listening to them, it's almost like listening to a high school band. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So what would you say would be your worst experience as a band director? You know, that's that day where everything was going wrong, you know, whether your kids just weren't listening, they weren't learning the music, just everything was going downhill. Every weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I say the worst experience is you're earlier, it was earlier in my career, you had a big performance coming up. We had just came off of Southern's Concert Band Festival. They made a one, and I'm like, oh, we're going to make ones at Concert Band Festival. We one point. Then all of a sudden, it was like one week later, getting ready to go to LMEA. We had practice. Kids didn't come to practice. Mm -hmm. um, then this was like right after state testing. So, of course, you didn't get to really see them in class mm -hmm. to work on the things we need to work on. So I really needed them at practice. They didn't come to practice. They were going to all these other different sports practices. And then some students didn't show up the day we had the performance. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So I had to try and make on-the-fly adjustments right there on the day of the performance. You know, they did about as well as I could expect them to do. But I really was disappointed because I really felt that year we had a chance at Sweet States. Okay. Like, were you – were you ever frustrated enough to say, you know what, man, I'm done with this. You know, maybe this is not for me. Maybe I should try something else. Like, have you ever reached that point before? Oh, yeah. It's definitely my first year. Because, you know, you're trying to – that was first year. You're learning. You take a lot of bumps and bruises your first year, trying to learn how to manage the behaviors of students. You know, you're like, oh, my goodness. They just don't care about this like how much I do. You know, so definitely my first year, I definitely felt that. But I powered on through it, and here I am still here today. Okay, okay. We have a question from Mr. Alex Fraser. He said, what's the most fulfilling aspect of being a middle school director? Uh, the most fulfilling aspect is seeing those students, not necessarily the ones that just, because you know you got some students that's going to start off on the horn and look like they're natural on the horn. The most uh, fulfilling aspect is watching those students that might have struggled at first and almost wanted to quit, and then you're able to encourage them to keep on pushing and keep on improving, and then boom. It all of a sudden, sudden snaps, and you see that improvement in progress in them. So seeing those students progress throughout your program, I think that's the most fulfilling aspect. Okay, okay. So personally, coming from you, Mr. Owens, how could you, how could we make the middle school in Baton Rouge, and not just Baton Rouge, but the state, 
you know, improve? Um, I would say first, uh, if you look at Baton Rouge, we have a lot of middle schools, but you also have to look at how many of those middle schools have band programs. Right, right. And how many of those band programs are actually active where you actually see them out performing. Mm -hmm. So I think first thing we have to have some advocacy for these programs and, you know, approach these administrators and tell them, you know, these are important programs to have with um, middle school groups because that, that only, not only helps the children, but then also think about how that much better Baton Rouge High School bands could be if everyone had um, quality feeder programs. Mm -hmm. You got some high schools in this area that have no feeder programs mm -hmm. so I, and are doing good jobs, even despite not having that. So just imagine how much better it would be if we had more feeder programs in this area. And then when you have them, support them. You know, make those kids, show, um, show those kids that you really appreciate how they're representing the school and the community by supporting them. So I think those are two things we can do to really help out the middle school programs in this area. Okay. I, I think Ricky has a question. Tori, as a middle school band director, do you feel or do you see that your kids are more excited to continue on to play their instruments and go to the high school and the collegiate level? Like on, say like on a Friday night, you get a chance to invite them out like Baker, take them to one of Baker High games and they perform in the stands for a couple of songs with the high school band, like, you know, early in the season, like late in the season. Do you think that encouraged them to keep going in the band, like make them want it more? I think that's a part of getting them more excited where they get to see, you know, how the high school band operates and getting that experience. Because I know uh, we actually do that at the high school. We have middle school night and we go out and perform at the game and they actually get a chance to actually perform for themselves as well so that um everybody gets to see them perform that might not normally see it and they kind of they get to um kind of feel like they're in the high school band and so they get a feel for that and also um last year baker high had hosted a gym battle and they actually got to perform with the high school band going against other high schools so them seeing the process they saw like oh okay this is not too bad because you know a lot of kids get scared and intimidated Mm -hmm. And them saying, okay, I can, I can do this. That um, can encourage them to uh, want to more be a part of the high school program. So I think that uh, does help. Okay, another thing. How important do you see being a, a, a Southern graduate, a Baker alum, a middle school director in the city you grew up, born and raised in, how important do you see middle schools in the Baton Rouge area, middle school and high school, they're like all the middle schools got directors from from what I understand. Only one I think missing one is Capital at the moment. And um all the different middle school band directors like get together and sit down and host those city training for like bring the high school director in to come in and work with the different woodwind. Like you might be strong on euphonium. You take the sit the middle school euphonium and start working with them and training them. You you invite them to this high school, them trumpet players take the old trumpet players. How sufficient in structure you think that'll be to help improve bands in not only Baton Rouge, but other cities? Um, I actually think that's an excellent idea because I, I believe I heard of like Atlanta and other cities that actually do, do stuff like that where all the directors pull their resources together and try and help each other out. So that's actually a good idea for uh, Baton Rouge to try out to help because Ultimately, you're helping the children. It wouldn't hurt. So that's definitely an excellent idea doing it. And also, do you think Southern being a pillow, the granddaddy of all HBCU bands, no matter what they say across the world, <laughs> everybody know. If somebody talk about eight, you could be in Timbuktu. You say, man, I, I want to hit me a college, more, a black, a HBCU band. If you ask them to the name five, Southern gonna be in the top three. Right. How, how, in, how, cause I did something at Washington Manual with Tamika and it kind of showed the kids different. How important is it for middle school and high school band directors to take their kids, not only to see Southern, but to get a chance to go see LSU perform? Oh, uh, you know, that's good to show them um, the diversity of music and show that, hey, there's Southern, there's LSU, because you're going to have some students that might not want to go play for Southern Band or even attend Southern. 
they might want to attend LSU, where you can show them, like, hey, LSU does band, too. And they also um, have concert band and everything. So to see the two different programs and expose them to different things is great. Um, I know I really like uh, taking my kids each year. LSU hosts that Tiger Rama concert. Yes. Where um, all yes. the kids in the area go to. So they get to experience that. And they really do a good job of interacting with the children with, uh, with that program. So, um, you know, it's a lot of discussion about PWI bands and HBCU bands. On what level of musicianship would you call it the same fundamentals? Even though the marching styles are different, but as a as a person that was in a high school band that watched band for me, I think you shouldn't judge. Band should be band should be appreciated for the musicianship that they display. Right, right. Because I mean, music is music. Whether you're core style or um, high stepping, uh, PWI, HBCU, we're all aiming for the same thing to give your best performance on the field and in the stands. Everybody wants to sound good. Everybody wants their songs to be appreciated and cheered on by the crowd. So I think we all have the same goals. It's just recognizing that we have different ways of achieving those goals. Okay. And what's, how, what's the, the future size you would like to see the Baker Middle School Band be? That's a good question. Uh, well, now we're, because you know it's it depends on the size of the school because as of now we're probably around 80 or 90 members but also while growing getting those resources that's needed to um, help sustain us as well okay okay so man uh since you know played in southern university marching band what would you say was the best moment in the band at southern the best moment with the band is so many to pick from. But uh, I would have to say, you know, meeting new people, your um, crab year, crabbing in 05, and meeting a whole bunch of different people and you forming a bond with them. And even today, you can still talk with them. And it's like, you know, you never went away from um, Southern. You just, you're still connected. So I still, I love that bond that you formed from playing in um, a group like that. Okay. So what would you say is the number one thing that the band culture in Baton Rouge and Baker is missing? I'd say uh, the one thing that we're missing as far as culture-wise, I just say everybody being on one accord, coming together. To get togetherness. Yeah, togetherness. Coming together, like uh, Ricky had talked about, workshops where all the directors, you know, do their little areas of expertise, helping out with each other's band, not being just about competing against each other, but all working together. It's not always about competition, but always working together. And, and, and another thing that can help with them going from, the kids going from middle, transitioning from the middle school into the high school. In the, in the latter part of the year, when your band, when, you're, when, you're, when your school is having a little event, like having an event, something like beat, like leap test coming up, the high school should want to bring about 30 kids drum section, a cup of horn, to the skids and play for the kids and, and let them know, we are right up the street. You can come You can do, You can can do. come back and see your teachers plus perform and let your little classmates look up to you in the band. It's small right. things and accolades like that. And also something I will give Tamika Holiday credit for that she does at Washington Manual. She makes show, it's called Christmas Carol. Thanksgiving holiday, Christmas holiday. We take the band to different nursing homes and activities in the center and play for the elderly. And what, what that does, when it's time to get donations, those people don't forget. Right. And you know, people people say, oh, I don't nobody want to donate to the program. But guess what? Start showing your face in the community. When you see the mayor got an event, tell the mayor, listen, mayor sergeant, so listen, this what you this what I do. I would love to bring the band because if I bring the band, the band gonna bring some the band. If I bring if I bring the full band, if I take Baker band, if I tell Baker that Baker Mayor having something like election time, I tell one of the candidates. You know, down the line, you know, if you win, whoever like the mayor race, 
Invite them all out to a debate and tell them I'm gonna bring the band. You know you're gonna be the mayor of, mayor of Baton Rouge. If I support you, can you support us? It only costs us if I got if I got a hundred kids and bake a band. All all you have to do is set aside a budget six hundred dollars and order me one set of uniform shirts. Buy me buy me subsidizing and one set of uniform shirts, and you can put on that sponsored by Mayor Sutton Such City of Baker. And guess what's gonna happen? More people are gonna see the band, and more people, more of the band go out and do for small charity events. It'll it'll be money less saved on the band. That means that'll be that'll be some money that you can get for more shirts and productivity. And when the people see the structure that you have with your program, the community will be like, okay. Man, we're having a grand opening over here with this with this uh, new restaurant. Such and such. Can you bring the band? We'll make a $500 donation to pay for your bus. Of course, the bus ain't going to be number, what? Baker not that big. Your bus is going to be $150 for two or three bus to go up the street and back. Right. And guess what? You done got your buses paid for. You done got most sponsorships. And guess what? Start telling them, listen, and a, and a lot of people don't realize this. Another way to get sponsorship for your program, high school, middle school. When you performing, like if you're in the high school level and the middle school level, like, you know, like I know you work with Herb up there. Man, go to those different, send out those letters. Listen, the band sits in this section. Mm -hmm. You we got we got a we got a platinum, a, a, a gold and a bronze, silver, bronze, platinum donation letter status. If you donate five hundred dollars, you get your big band in front of the band section or somewhere. And guess what happens? When the band plays, everybody gonna pay attention to who? You're a banner right there. Right. It's small right. things like that that you can get done to, to generate the funding that, and have funding coming in year round for your band for it. Because you, people don't realize this, a $250 donation could get you a lot of mouthpieces pieces and reeds for those yes. woodwinds and brass instruments from, from, um, from Ziggler or wherever you are them from. And you know, it's small things like that that could be taken into content and done. But mm -hmm. it's so much ego trip and too much pride to, to do small events and wonder why they struggle to go places that they want to go. If you support home, the home going to support you. Right. You know, it's like, and you know, and the thing is, Tori, I applaud you. You don't hold your kids back. You put them in parades. You go to festivals. You go to games. You do what a lot of people don't do on the high school level with their band. Right. You don't make excuses. And I like the structure that you have with those kids. They listen. You get on that microphone, fake a high school, line up, one, two, three. <laughs> you know, but you know, I, 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 I encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing the bag for those kids to to be in somebody at college. Keep pushing it. You know, don't stress, oh, you got to go to high school. Tell them, I done had you three, two or three years. Let me let let this, let this me see you perform for four more with this band. And when you finish that, give me four more at this university. I'm going to be proud of you because I watched you graduate middle school through the band. I watched you graduate high school through the band. I watched you go to, to the collegiate level perform and graduate. That means I get to see you graduate three times. I'm proud of you in my heart three times. Once you right. get that, once you get that in those kids in middle schools, those value standards and morals are always going to be passed on. Mr. Tari was proud of Janae for going to um, Scottsdale, graduate and go to college. I'm going to do the same thing. You know, friends in the middle school follow what the other, the most important person do. Yep. Right. And you know, and something else, something else I, I, I learned to do when I, when I was at Washington Mary. I tried not to pick the most popular person for drum major. Mm -hmm. I want the person that too many people don't care for. You get what I'm saying? Like the little, the little average kid. That's who I want to be my drum major because the people that's supposed to be drum major gonna get mad and try to step their game up and get it. Right. But guess what? By the time you step your game up and get it, you put the you put the person that the person, not the person that the crowd want in front of your, your middle school band, put the person that you feel most suitable for it. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing that sets the tone for quality musicians. Don't pick the don't pick the most important person in the room. Pick the least important person in the room and make everybody else try to improve their morality, their values, their goals, 
their musicianship, their study habits, they they thinking process of going to class every day, stop skipping class. Why this person, I'm better than this person on, on clarinet, but she the drum major. But look at what the attributes this person have that I can that contributes to what I feel is drum major as a leader of my situation. That person goes to class. I never heard of the person getting wrote up. I never seen a person on the tardy list. I never seen a person in the principal unless I send them with a hall pass. Once that person set the example, everybody else is gonna want to follow because why? They want to work hard to be the band captain, a drum major on the next level. It starts, it starts on a lower level. Then you work. It's like staircase, man. The bottom to the top. Right. You know, just keep pushing the bag, Tori. Do what you're doing. You know, man. If I can help you any kind of way, you know, I'm just a call away. I, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, crazy Ricky, Ricky, crazy Ricky," just talk shit to that. But they don't understand how many people I didn't help behind the scenes, closed doors. Thanks. Right. Facts. One fact. A lot of people don't remember. You remember S.O.D. was at a Struma practicing. No. Was it a Struma? It was a, It was either a Struma or a Baker. A Struma, I believe. And they had all those band members and we got them breakfast. The, 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 you know what it was? It was a Struma because they had to buy the band in Memorial. You remember yeah. I went and got all them? You remember I went and got all them boxes of donuts for them kids for free? You know, and got juice from the. I went and got about twelve gallons of juices from the store down the street at the uh, Piggly Wiggly. Why? Because I went in there and spoke as an advocate for the kids. They practicing hard to represent this area and that. Some people give you stuff. Don't be scared to ask. Right. Because you never know. You never know. Right. Listen, if you could do anything, see can you get Baker Middle a nonprofit five hundred one c three status? Because you get that with that. Donations are gonna come out the door because it's called itemizations for the big company tax write off. You never know. You might meet somebody. Man, what's your band need? I need to. I need to do a tax write. I need four trumpets. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You got them. No. You know it. Just, it's just small thing. And why I know a lot of band directors on here. And you know I'm gonna say this here. Band directors, including Tori. Remember this. Energy, Walmart. Um, Walmart, Demco, big corporations have a volunteerism program mm -hmm. in their budget. You have to go to it's under community service. If you're a parent, if you're a student in your band, have a parent or co cousin, any family member that works at Walmart, you can get that. They can print that paper out and they can come sit with your band. It don't matter if it's 30 minutes a game. Just show, walk in and take pictures, show that they chaperoning with your band. And they fill that paperwork out and have you sign it, Tori, or any director and a parent sign it and turn it and sit, and they can take it to their store. Walmart donate up to $1,000 per worker to a child in your band. Wow. Yeah. It's things I know that a lot of people don't know. How do I know? It worked at Washington Mary at Walmart. Mm-hmm. Y'all can't y'all can't see me. I'm sitting outside. I just got back picking up shrimps and crab and seafood and stuff for tomorrow. This but you know, oh yeah, boy. Boy, I'm cocked and loaded. Hold on, let me show you. So Tori, man, since we're talking about bands, man, let's talk about all-star bands, man. What's what's your thoughts about all-star band? Because you know, some people say all-star band is it's not a good thing, you know, it takes away from the high school and the college uh programs. But what's your thoughts about all-star band? Well, I, I love the all-star bands because just, I don't see how you cannot like uh, seeing students, um, and high school students all coming together over the summer and practicing on their instruments and being exposed to all this different music and coming together. I mean, I don't see how you can't like that. that I mean, that's, that's, a, I really love it. I mean, I, when I was in high school, um, I started with the Baton Rouge All-Star Band. You know, I didn't, I would have never known anybody from Glen Oaks or McKinley or anything, but because of that All-Star Band, I made friends from those schools. And then, of course, went with LLI, then traveling all over the country with LLI. Those are experiences many students might not ever get to experience. So I think uh, the All-Star Bands are a great idea. I have no issues with uh, All-Star Bands. Okay, okay. Can I answer that? Right, go ahead, Rick. <laughs> First of all, it shouldn't be no problem with All-Star Bands because those kids, get a chance to practice and learn 
musicianship that can be taught and brought back to their program to make their program better in which they supersede and march in through the year. Because once for show, when Mr. Knighton had the band, he wasn't going to no high school. You had to go to LI to learn the techniques of teaching through him that he taught Southern. Right. Hammer left Washington, Maryland in 05, 06, I believe. And when he was at, and he was at LII, he taught the fundamentals of how Hamer teach band. Yo, yo, you know, Brian, kid, a lot of those kids are never get to get taught the skill set to be better musicians that can help them and help their program that they learning from All Star Band. Even in Mississippi, Travis Pruitt, outstanding composer, outstanding writer, he teaches those kids structures. Brian and LAI teaching those kids structures. And also, guess what? You, your high school kid in those all-star programs get to sit next to people that's going to teach them proper technique, proper tone quality, attacks and release, why they're in sectionals. So when they learning this over the summer from the all-star bands, it applies to your band camp. Man, listen, when we go to sectional, such and such that March that Southern with our band director taught me and showed me this routine. Let's try to practice this together. Let's right. go over this. And when they go over that, it gonna make that section stronger and your band program good, better. And take for instance, New Orleans. Everybody don't get a chance to meet Eric French and mm -hmm. play under him, Kenny Collins. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Barra Coleman. Um, even when Miguel that's at Talladega was working with them. You know, All-Star Band has seen a lot of great talent, band members from collegiate, high school, middle school, band directors from all over. It's a lot of, it's, it's some band directors that teaching during All-Star Band in writing that are not band directors, that are better than some actually band directors. And so I think the hate for summer band comes in they see their kids having more fun under another teacher or another student of the game than what they're getting from their own program. That's the part that hurts the program. And egos, egos, egos. It's no way no all the band directors in Baton Rouge shouldn't be working at LII. Why? Because when you have incoming freshmen, you can host the summer band camp at LII together and put all the kids under one thing everybody cannot make cannot pay to afford to go to southern band camp which is how everybody because when you go to southern band camp you mean people from all over the world do a band camp at lii one week the, the woodwind go the next week the upper brass go then one week the drums go then you know do it do it like that and what happens is once everybody get their talent in and they, the final week of the, the month of program guess what you have one big mass performance and guess what that does that's people get to take the, the the things that they learned over the weekends from the different band directors the different techniques the different breathing structures the different okay you know you got a downbeat one and come in on the end you know don't come in on the up end you're missing the beat you know t sight reading classes if someone teach sight and read it'll be it'll be such a beautiful thing in these cities if they can come together over the summer instead of waiting until they're actually at school camp to try to teach those kids. Have a citywide incoming freshman, a new musician camp. You know, summer all-star band teaches that. And people wonder why New Orleans is consistent because they had an all-star band. Okay. So, uh, Tori, man, Mark Ward has a few questions. <laughs> he said, actually, <laughs> What would he do if a student <laughs> left a baritone on the bus for three weeks? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> he bring up what happened to me. <laughs> oh, man. Funny story. Uh, you know, I do like, uh, I'll, you know, mistakes happen. You know, just tell them we'll find it. Hopefully we find the horn, you know, and we'll move on from there. <laughs> or you had to ask that question. <laughs> okay. Ricky, man, they are, man, they own you in the comments. So, Ricky, uh, Mark said, what, what makes them better band directors, Ricky? And then Trent Johnson said, are you saying only the 
college band directors can teach those things. What 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 Mark said? Mark said, "What makes them better band directors?" I guess he's talking about the uh, college band directors, I'm, high school band directors. I'm 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 see they, see they're taking what I said out of context. I'm not saying the college band directors are better or the summer band directors are better of than in the other high school. What I'm saying is, if all directors come together as one and teach and help other students from other schools. Everybody be on the same note. That's the problem. Don't nobody want to help nobody. It's just ego trips. Like when 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 Trent was at Baker, when Trent was at um Baton Rouge All Star, when Trent was at LLI, Trent did not mind opening the door for other band directors to come in and help him. He was he's he, Trent was not a selfish band director. Trent was not selfish. I remember watching Trent come work with that lady against Capitol in 97. It was 97 or 98 we played Baker. And they was y'all used to sit in the end zone, Tori. Yeah. That's when y'all had the bleachers in the end zone. You know, so I'm not saying the, the summer band directors and the college band directors are better than nobody. I think I think summer band actually helped a lot of high school bands kids get to where they want to go to. Sure. Like right now. It's going to be hard for a lot of bands to recuperate due to COVID-19. Yeah. Ricky, man, he said, so Mark is saying. So Hold on, saying, I can't hear this. Put them firecrackers up. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, so, okay, so Mark Ward said, you said all-star, all-star band directors are better than high school band directors. Is, is that what you're saying? That ain't what I'm saying. What I said was, it's a lot of high school band directors on certain levels in certain cities across the country that despise of what happens with summer bands because they're jealous of what their kids are being exposed to and they don't have the tools to expose them to. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. And, and y'all already know, Ricky will tell this to anybody, any day, any place. That's how I just feel. Like, <laughs> Like right now, you got people saying certain things about certain bands. Man, when y'all see these bands, y'all talk to them and like it ain't nothing. Tell them what you said behind their back. <laughs> I, I, fuck, don't don't be mad at me because I ain't scared to tell a motherfucker what it is. Yeah, y'all ain't got Ricky started, Mark. You got Ricky started, man. <laughs> man, I'm good. D, listen, man, I'm. I just went picked up. 150 crabs for tomorrow and 40 pounds of shrimp. I'm not worrying about nothing. Because listen, listen, band don't pay my bills. I do what I do for, I do what I do for kids and band programs from the heart. You know what I'm saying? Band, band don't pay these bills over here. You know, I'm just one of the ones that ain't scared to speak out to the one that got opinions. And you know, how can I say it? I'm not gonna even say that though. Next question. <laughs> I ain't gonna even say that. I ain't gonna even say that. Because because I know I hurt, I hurt, I I I stir up a beehive and people gonna people gonna think the laughing and joking and it it gonna get it gonna go away from band to some street shit, which a lot of people ain't ready for. Rick, man. But Tori, man, is there anything you need for your band program? You know, shirts, equipment, anything like that, man? Maybe me and Ricky could be of assistance. Uh, as of now, uh, we're just trying to find a way uh, to see how we're going to do band this fall. Of course, we could always use reeds. I mean, that, that, that'd be killing our budget. Just getting mm-hmm. reeds for the clarinets and saxophone players. Send us, a, send us a list of sizes you need. All right, I will. Any help is needed. We'll be received, well received. Mark, come on, man. <laughs> Mark said, y'all having a Juneteenth boil? <laughs> 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 Mark, man, don't make me block you, man. No, man. <laughs> you, you ain't got to block him? <laughs> Who is this, hey. Fraser? What's going on, Alex? Hey, listen, they know what it is with Ricky. They know. Mark, Mark ain't gonna take. The, Mark ain't gonna tell y'all that. L, I slapped him with it, Donaldsonville. I mean, in Northside after that battle of the band when I was at Washington, when he was sitting on the side and went around the other way of the track. 
Man, speaking of battle bands, Trent, man, as far as the high school battle bands, what's the best high school battle band that you've either been a part of or that you watched? <laughs> Man, these niggas. Okay. We have another question, uh, Tori. Trent said, who was better, Baker or Capital? Oh, huh? my God. <laughs> what did he say? That didn't need said, to be answered. Who was better, <laughs> Baker or Capital? <laughs> What'd you say? That didn't need to be answered. <laughs> what did he say? He said, who was better, Baker or Capital? <laughs> right now? What, Baker? What, high school bands? Of course, of course, you cannot compare Capital to no one because we have no program. <laughs> and and Baker didn't have a sound found. Uh, Baker didn't have a, a good strong band until I think Trent got there. So they was cool, more core style. So by the time Baker started evolving into a, a competitive band, Capital was declining into a non satisfactional band program. Let's 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 speak let's speak the real and speak clear. <laughs> let's let's be factual on that. Man, y'all in these comments. <laughs> oh, matter of fact, oh, hold on. Let me get my laptop so I can see some of these comments. Hold on. Uh -oh. Tori, Tori. <laughs> well, I told you, man. I told you Ricky was gonna cut up. <laughs> no, no, I'm not cutting up. I just I, I'm not cutting up, D. It just it just like people people say slick shit and don't think shit could be answered. You know what I'm saying? Slick shit don't go by around here, man. It don't. Mark, man, come on, man, ease up, man, ease up. <laughs> Mark, you went to Zachary. When y'all had a program besides concert? <laughs> Speak on it. Speak on it. I'm, I'm logging in. Hold on, I'm logging in. So, Tori, uh, what would you say? Like, what was your your favorite band song to play in college while you said something? The song that you just got so excited to play every time y'all played it. See, I have to go with uh. Mr. Jackson's favorite was uh I have to go with uh I remember. Cause just seeing how excited he is when he's conducting it, you, it makes you get more amped up when you play it. So uh that and then I also say uh as far as ballads, I go with two hearts by Mr. Knight. Yes, yes, yes. Man, that's that's my favorite band song right there, Two Hearts, man. Like that song just does something, man. I also remember back in 2012, Mr. J was a band director. I think Southern played all corn at all corn and they played that song. Man, uh it was so funny when Mr. J left the podium. Oh, I'm here now. I'm oh, here now. Uh, <laughs> man, what did you think about that? Really, really cool. I learned about how you can automate. Yeah, Ricky, turn that down real quick. Okay. Yes. From the, the Southern Club game point against all corn when Mr. J got on the field. Man, what was your First reaction on that tour. I was like, yeah, there go Mr. Jackson right there. Uh, Action Jackson. You know, uh, I know the kids loved it because it just makes you get hype. And then the, the fans got hype. Everybody was getting hype seeing that. So um, that was a, uh, I, I loved seeing it and loved seeing that excitement. Okay, okay. So since we're talking about Southern Band, man, do you think Southern has ever taken a L? In the band, or just the L in general. Who is that? Southern never, never, never take L. <laughs> and in fact, uh, with Southern, we don't even compare ourselves to other programs. We look, we only compare ourselves to other editions of Southern's band. Okay. okay. With these comments, hey, okay, Trent said Underground Showdown and Paul Arthur. Okay, Ricky, man, you got something else to add? Oh no, I'm, I'm here for the comments right now. <laughs> no, Southern, Southern took an L fall 2000 to fan. Tori, man, would you like to comment? Oh, that was before my time. I... <laughs> <laughs> what, what year you was in the band, Tori? <laughs> 05. Huh? 05, 2005. Yeah, y'all was dangerous that year. Y'all was dangerous. Yeah, that's when y'all went to Atlanta and y'all played it in damn what? Yeah. 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 Another song Mr. Jackson gets hype on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, um, you know, even though with this COVID-19 stuff going on, are you, you know, even excited about this upcoming fall, whether, you know, we even have a bad season or, you know, excited? 
Yeah, y'all was angry. Y'all was angry. Yeah, um, I think me being middle school, it's probably a little bit easier for me to say, yeah, I'm excited, just being able to teach. Because I'm going to always find a way to teach it, whether it's digital or um, in, um, in person or if it's 50-50. I'm going to always find a way to teach band. I know high school directors might feel a little bit differently because, you know, they're used to doing preparing for football games, preparing for battle of the bands, and they might not have that experience. So I say – um, since I'm on middle school, yeah, I'm all right. High school, I can understand where why they wouldn't feel like the same way. Okay, okay. So for you know anybody that, that out there that wants to know, what are some of your recruiting methods as far as getting kids to join your band? Uh, first thing is of course you know I saw this topic actually came up on Facebook about the music you play. Um, I know when I was in middle school, we primarily just played straight out the book and played concert music all year round. I think uh, I kind of adapted to where, you know, I'll play some tunes that the kids like to hear on the radio. And, uh, you know, we play at pep rallies, and then I'll take them on um, these performances. We go to parades. We did battle the bands, and we also do concert band. So they see all the different – we're hitting all the different areas of band. So exposing them all these different things makes them um, enjoy the program a lot more, and then they spread it to their friends. And then their little brothers and sisters – see they uh little brother and sister marching on um the parades downtown or when we took a trip to Biloxi they got to be on live tv so um the community and their uh friends and their little brothers and sisters seeing all that makes them want to join the program as well so it's just about meeting the kids where they are and doing things that they'll enjoy too not just making it about yourself but also doing things that the kids enjoy that's one way to get recruiting also um get your kids to recruit their friends i mean they're the best recruiters for you it's mm -hmm. just getting them to help you with their recruiting okay okay so have you ever had any students that you lost to the band program whether it was from sports or you know uh, lack of interest or uh, and what were your methods as far as getting those kids back into the band program see uh you know and with the middle school and then us being a small middle school we only have about 200 kids at the mm -hmm. school so, you know, majority of my students are also on the athletic team. So it's kind of a give and take. You know, I understand I'm not going to be able to really have band practice and do events until after football season is over. With. Mm -hmm. So, you know, working with the coaches and all that, so there is no conflict. That way they're able to um, do both sports and band. I tell them, we're not, we're not going to conflict. I know when the season is for football. I know when the season is for basketball. I'll make sure there is no events during those seasons so we don't have that conflict so you don't have to make a choice you know in middle school you don't have to make that choice of whether to do sports or not so I don't really have an issue with sports if I lose students it's typically due to them transferring to other schools mm, okay that's that's typically mainly how I lose students okay so what keeps you going every day as far as being a banner of the light what what keeps motivating you to want to teach these kids and help them become better musicians and, and, you know, get them ready for the high school and college level? Like, what, what keeps you going? Well, it helps that uh, <clears throat> choosing a career that I really enjoy doing. It doesn't even feel like a job because I love doing it. So it doesn't feel like a job. And um, you get to see the kids. Finally, uh, they start off not knowing hardly anything about music. And then seeing them eventually where they're coming to you, showing you stuff they found about um, songs they want to play. And um, them pulling up bands. Some of them are watching <clears throat> more clips than I was watching. So seeing how much they take to enjoy music is um <clears throat> going as well. Thank you, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that pop on the screen. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, man. Come on. <laughs> man, Trent, Mr. Trent Johnson, man, if you're still watching, I would love to get you in for an interview, man. Ricky, man. Why those? Why those guys in Port Arthur giving me a hard time? This the only media pass I kept all year because I like their, what they doing in Port Arthur. Mm -hmm. I brag about them when they don't think I'm bragging. <laughs> Tor, hey, Tori, ask D if I'm lying. <laughs> Man, do you have any, uh, any last words for Mr. Williams? Man. Tori, I see why I switched over to the dance world and do what I do. Um, 
with the dance community and make community dance and high school and collegiate dance. But just keep doing what you're doing with your band kids. Uh, keep, keep doing what you're doing and keep producing future musicians at the rate and the level that you're doing because you're, make, you're making band kids that are able to go compete with the ninth, with the tenth and ninth graders, at ninth and tenth, eleventh and twelfth grades at other schools. Keep pushing them. Keep doing. Make sure they understand education is music, and music yeah. is education. Without right. the education, they can't do music. Mm -hmm. yeah. And without music education, they can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, keep pushing. Do do the great things you're doing. You know, like I say, get with D. Get with the size that you're needing, and we're gonna we're gonna work generally to make right. sure you have it before school start back for your program. Right. We really appreciate it. We have uh, we have one more question for you. Sorry, man, it's coming from uh, Trent. He said, "Do you allow sixth graders to march and parades and other uh, marching events?" Well, typically, uh. Is my marching groups are usually the performing group is usually my more experienced seventh and eighth graders. But what I do do is I use that as a way to motivate the sixth graders to improve in practice. And I'd be like, hey, I have an open slot for a trumpet player, or I have an open slot for a trombone player. If you can play this and you can reach this part in the book, you know, I'll give you that spot where you can come with us to the parade and march. So I kind of use it as an incentive for our sixth graders. So if they're performing at the level that I set, for them to play with the group, yeah, I'll allow them to march with it, but they have to meet those goals in order to perform with the group. Okay, okay. So, man, uh, it's a great interview, man. Do you have any last words? Or, oh, I have one more question for you, man. Just, uh, would you like to give any words of encouragement to your band students? Like I said, you know, with all this, you know, COVID going on, you know, all these social issues going on, what's, what's your words of encouragement? See, you know, just, no, we're gonna get through this, stay strong, stay safe, and we'll all be here. You know, I'm gonna always be here to help you. You know, I'm here in Baker. You always know they can reach out to me on our um, Google Classroom or in our Remind app if you ever need anything. And no, I'm <laughs> always here for you. Okay, okay, man, this has been a great interview, man. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Tory Williams, Baker Middle School Head Band Director from Baker, Louisiana. And yes, like Ricky said, Tori, man, just reach out to us and um, we would definitely help you, man. All right. Thank you. Definitely appreciate it. All right. Stay safe, man. You too. All right.